Okay, um, thank you everybody for attending this talk on intercepting network requests. And today I'll show you how you can write, actually write Swift codes to view network requests in your iOS apps. So my name is Kenneth Poon, and here are some information about myself. Um, here's my email. Feel free to drop me on any questions about this topic um, after today. Um, here's my Git, GitHub page. Um, so the content which I'll be presenting today, I'll be putting up on GitHub. Or it's actually already on GitHub. Here's my Medium post. Um, so in the days to come, I'll write the Medium post about this talk. And here's my LinkedIn profile. So feel free to connect with me. So um, you, you, some of you have seen me before, even though I forgot who you are. Um, so I've given three talks so far in the, in the iOS community. The first was in July 2016, where I show, introduced XCUI test and Gherkin. Uh, November 2016, where I showcased um, how to use dynamic library code injection um, and how to use this technique to hack the, the game that just came out, Pokemon Go. And we will also be using this technique um, later in the talk. And in March 2018 this year, I introduced uh, the framework Cucumberish and how to bring BDD into your Xcode development. So the content of this talk is actually centered on this Facebook post. Um, so it's, um, it was posted in our Facebook group uh, two weeks ago. Um, is Terence around here? Okay, he's not here. Okay, so our friend, our friend actually asked, is it still possible to analyze HTTPS co communication between iOS app and their servers using tools like Fiddler? So let me ask the audience, um, anybody knows of any tools or tricks where you can actually inspect HTTP requests? Any ideas to shout out? Charles Proxy. Charles Proxy. Ah, Charles Proxy, any, any, any more? MITM Proxy. Also. Yeah, MITM Proxy. So um, these tools actually perform the man in the middle attack, as mentioned by our friend over here. So just a simple... Um, share some details about man in the middle attack. So proxy server is set up between the device and the server. And you can actually set up, um, you can set up your device to point to the proxy server by just modifying your Wi-Fi settings. So the proxy server creates a private set to enable the HTTPS. So in order for the man in the middle attack to work, the device needs to install the, the server certificate into the device global trust store and thereby and whereby it whitelists the cert. So when the app communicates with the proxy server, it checks the cert, hey, it's now trusted, and hence it allows the HTTPS connection. When man in the middle attack is in effect, the proxy server will be able, will be able to see all requests being fired from the device. So some, some of the tools, well-known tools will be like Burp Suite, uh, Wireshark, Fiddler, and MITM proxy, and um, Charles proxy as well. So one way to prevent SSL certificate pinning is uh, to prevent this attack is to use SSL certificate pinning whereby we we add the trusted server cert into our app and we just add in extra codes so that uh, to ensure that the app only communicates with servers uh, using that particular cert. So I will just show you spend about two to three minutes showing you what is meant in the middle attack. Okay. So let me mirror my screen now. Okay, cool. So I will start off running MITM proxy and then I will set up my app. Sorry, I cannot make it in the app. Uh -huh. Okay, so I go to my Wi Fi setting and go all the way to the bottom where you can see HTTP proxy. I set to manual and this uh, and my Mac will now act as the proxy server. So I have to key in the IP address. Is it correct? Yeah, correct. Okay. And so the default prox the default port is 8080. Okay, cool. So now, get this out of the way. So now I will go and open up one of the apps on my phone. 
Oh, so a lot of things are happening right now. So I'll open up. I'll open up the CNN app. And now you can see below, um, there's a, you can see all the requests that are fired from the app to the server, whereby my, my, my Mac is acting as a proxy server and you can see all the requests that have been sent out. Um, so you can see things like, let's see one. Um, let's see this over here. Um, it's sending to a URL called mobile.un, blah, blah, blah. And you can, if you just tap on it, you can see even see the... Oh, you can't pass the file. You can, for some of the requests, you can actually see the JSON. Uh, this, let me see. Let's find one application JSON. Okay. Okay, this one, control.cochava.com. So when you tap on this, you can even see the JSON body that being sent out from the device. So this is pretty cool. So let me get back to my slides. Okay, cool. So now when we develop iOS, iOS apps, we know that we need to create a URL request and then we will need to make use of the URL session and then we send the request uh, through into the HTTPS secure channel. So here's my idea. How about injecting code into the app in a way that we can intercept the network request before they enter the secure channel? So the gear over here represents the dynamic framework that we will be coding out and creating and then we'll be inserting it into our app. So what are we going to code? So firstly, let's visit Apple's URL loading system, which is the URL protocol. And that is Apple's URL loading system. So basically, there are different protocol classes to handle different kinds of URL. So here are five default URL protocols already defined in the system. There's FTP, HTTP, HTTPS, file, and data. So for each protocol, we need to define two things, very simple. One, a method that can determine whether, whether a protocol knows how to handle a URL request. Second, the implementation of how to process the URL. So give an example, for the FTP, for the FTP um, URL, URL protocol, um, it probably defines that hey, if a if a request has the um, has the text FTP colon forward slash forward slash, then it's something I know that I I can I know how to process it, and the implementation you probably just send the request over port twenty one. So we can for us we can um, we can also create custom protocols, but because um, the new protocols are not are not in the system. Uh, this are, we are going to create a new protocol class. We have to register into the loaded loading system. Uh, we can also make use of the custom uh, protocols for caching, as well as analyzing and modifying any requests and responses. So we need to take note of two two methods when we try to create our own custom URL protocols. One is the the static method or function registers class. So when you have a new subclass, we need to register with the system um, so that whenever a request comes in, it knows that, hey, there's, a, there's also a new URL class that we need to uh, look up for. And then next, um, for the URL session configuration class, there is a instance method called protocol classes. And the data type of the return value is uh, array of any class. But it's in fact an array of uh, pro URL protocol subclasses. So under the hood, how does the system work? Whenever the, the app receives a request, it will get the current session's configuration and call the method protocol classes. And this will return an array of protocol, protocol classes. So the system will ask, hey, P1, do you know how to handle this request? And if P1 says no, then, uh, then the system will actually go and ask the next, the next protocol class, and continue until it finds one that know how, knows how to un, know, 
understands how to, to process the, the request. So now the system asks, hey, P2, do you know how to handle this request? And P2 said, hey, yeah, I know how to do it. Great. So now the system will create instance of the protocol class and use it to handle the request. So do note, um, the, order, the order of the protocol class in that array plays a huge part, part because if there are any conflicts, um, like, like for number two protocol classes having the very similar implementation of can init with request, um, the first one, the first um, class, the first, the earlier protocol class in the array will actually take precedence. Okay, so here is what I proposed. Okay, let's let's create a new Xcode project with a dynamic framework target scheme, and then we're going to create our own subclass of URL protocol, and in our class we're going to add some extra code to to print out the URL request in curl format as well as log it into a Slack channel. And because we have a new protocol class, we need to register with the loading system. And we want to make sure, and we want to always make sure that our uh, protocol class is the first element in that array. So hence, we're going to use the method swizzling technique here. So number five, when we're done with all this, we do the framework, and then we can easily drag and drop the framework into any of our Xcode projects to use it. Uh, for IPA files, device apps, uh, you will probably need to patch the, You will need to patch them using a op2. Uh, I have a GitHub repo with scripts to help you with that. Um, and then that will actually load the framework into memory upon launching the app. So next, um, when you're done, you can use CDN Impactor to sideload the patched app into your iOS device. So now let's go straight into the demo. Okay, so this is the class, this is the project that I have over here. Um, it's pretty simple, there's only a few classes. Uh, for the interest of time, I'm just going to focus on the important parts of it. So number one, I'm having, um, here is my subclass that the new URL protocol that I created. And here is the, here is the function that I need to implement. Basically telling the system, hey, do you, uh, do I know how to handle a particular request? So, um, so for now, I'm going to only filter for HTTP and HTTPS. And over here, I will, I will lock the request onto the console, as well as send it to my Slack logger class. But at the end, I'm going to say no. You're going to ask me a question, but I'm going to say no. Along the way, I'm able to look up the request and log it into the into the console and to Slack. So, but of course, if you if you want to to return this to true, we can do it. Um, all you have to do is implement the start loading function um, and implement how you want to send the, the data over um, the request over the network. So here you can just simply create an NS URL connection. Then below you can simply just implement the connection delegate and the data delegate uh, protocols. Cool. So, and here I have a Slack logger class. Um, it's basically, here's the Slack authorization token, the channel ID, and what it does is actually it will build, it will create the, a new request um, that sends the, a string payload to, Slack, to a Slack channel. Here is the API. And the string that I want to send over is actually, I created a, a variable called, a getter variable called. <coughs> Uh, what it does, it will just create the, the simple curl command that you can paste it on your terminal to run. So curl.x, HTTP method, and then I can print out. And I also add in the HTTP header fields and the HTTP body. Okay, so let's test this out. So I clean. So now I'm going to build my framework in the iPhone simulator architecture. Okay, cool. I'm going to copy it. So I copy this guy. And I go to my other project.
Okay, so I delete. We paste it back here. Okay, cool. So now I'm going to run my app. So let me clear my Slack channel. Uh, where the app coming? Where the app? So I'm going to search for a uh, country for the weather. So I type T. And then now the Slack, what happens? Um, the Facebook actually intercepts um, intercepts the request using the UR protocol and sends this payload over to Slack channel through the Slack API. So let's say P A R. So this Paris. Uh, so okay, I can even copy this curl command and go onto my console over here. And there you go. I can actually see the the JSON response when I paste it into my terminal. So of course this is very trivial. So let's try something more challenging. So now I want to build my framework in the iPhone OS architecture. So I I get the framework and I go to this folder. This is actually a GitHub repository that can help um, help you guys um, patch IPA files and I'll explain it later. I go over here, I delete the old one, the old framework. Yep, sorry. Okay, it's over here. And then and I'm going to patch the app called Tinder. Have you guys used Tinder before? Okay, cool. Okay, um just to share um what this um, this repository do is that um, it will go through this um, it will pick up all the frame all the dynamic libraries in this folder and will add them into the the IPA file which is the which is the app on a device. So what hap so you'll be asking me, hey how come there's so many other files that I need to insert? Because Tinder is, is primarily written in Objective C. It doesn't have the Swiss library. So if if you want to run Swift codes onto your onto your app, you need to you need to add in the Swift dynamic libraries into your app. So that's why I'm actually throwing the whole um, all the libraries over here. So at the end, after successfully patching the IPA over here, here is the newly created IPA file. This one. So now I use CDN Infector to site load the IPA into my device so I have to log in with my Apple developer account okay cool so you'll be asking what is CDN Impactor um, so or what CDN Impactor does it will help you have to key in your, your Apple developer credentials and what it does it will log into Apple for you and will download your your developer provisioning profile and use that to sign your IPA file. Um, once your IPA file is signed, you can actually install right into your phone, your, your own phone. And the signing process takes quite a while because, well, this IP, this app is actually 111 megabytes and we need to sign everything inside, including all the frameworks, resources, and files. So this whole process takes about about one to two minutes and it's, it's about done. Meanwhile, let me prepare the console. Let's clear this. Okay, I'm going to do Tinder coming up. And then I have my console on the phone. And let's check anything else. Okay, I think that's about it. Okay, so now Tinder is ready. So I'm going to launch Tinder. So 
Right now I can see all the requests coming up. So let, let, let's play with Tinder for a while, shall we? <laughs> okay, so I logged in with Facebook. I'm not very familiar with, with, with Tinder, so you got to help me out. Uh, okay, so um, I'm going to share my location. I don't need to be notified. Oops, let's try again. Not now. Okay. Um, <laughs> let's, let's play around. Huh? Um, okay, I cannot see your eyes, so I'm still going to say no. I think you're okay. You wear a nice watch. You wear nice earrings. Yes. Oh, I'm... <laughs> okay, um, sorry, you're too old for me. No. Okay, and, and then we go on. So now we're actually getting a lot of requests. Um, for now, I'll just stop the app. Okay, so meanwhile, what happens? Um, MITM proxy, if I filter by API dot go Tinder, I can see all the requests um, being intercepted by our MITM proxy. You can see the post request, you can see you can see this one, da 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 da, it's a JSON, everything. What about our own request? We can see everything as well. We can even see let me see. Let me start from the top. We can even see API sent to Facebook. That's probably because Tinder uses the Facebook SDK. And let's see for anything interesting we can use. Okay, so um, so let's try this. This is the if you can read this is the authentication login for that on the for Facebook on the Tinder API. So let's copy the entire curl command. Copy. I go to my console. I paste it. Yep. Okay. I can now get the uh, OAuth token for the API. Cool. Um, so any other interesting things here? Well, I can see the API for like passing, passing a profile. I can see a profile for liking for liking a profile. Da da da. So just try this again. Okay, um, I have some interesting um, JSON response, but of course I do not know how to interpret. And I even have. Let me see something interesting here. Oh, what is this? There's an image. So I wonder what this is. Or who this is? Nope, this is me. <laughs> uh, this is probably one of the profiles um, which is coming up later. So feel free to actually um, use this um, use this framework to actually spy on other or any apps. Okay. So that's the thing. So Kenneth, what about SSL pinning? So things like Charles Proxy, uh, MITM Proxy, they have problems. Um, it's a challenge to actually um, get around SSL pinning. So can your can your request um, can your framework handle that? Why well, not? Let's try. Let's try. Let's try. Okay. So now I go and I've already patched one app. Um, I patched Twitter. So let's try because. Um, Twitter actually implemented uh, SSL pinning for the APIs. So let's do site loading again. So here's the thing. Um, the app will actually do a simple the check with the domain and get the certificate and check whether, hey, is this certificate valid? Oh, sorry, is this certificate valid? But before it does that, it goes through the system where the URL loading system asks, hey, do you know how to handle this request? So I'm using this strategy to actually ask, the quest ask that question to our URL protocol and get the whole URL request. But the system towards um, later on will actually reject sending the request. So that's why some of these uh, proxy servers cannot intercept those, uh, cannot see those requests. So right now it takes some time.
Mi mo lang may sarap again. Tap this one up. Here we have Twitter. Come on up. Go to my console, I clear. Okay, I'm all ready. So now I'm going to start and hit open Twitter. So when I open Twitter, ah, I start to see a lot of requests over here. And you can see, hey, there's an uh, API call post request going to api.twitter.com. And this is recorded by the framework. So let's look at MITM proxy. Uh, apparently, I don't find any. If I do a check, api.twitter. Yeah, MITM proxy cannot see those. Oops. So let me remove the filter. Yeah, because SSL uh, pinning is in, is in effect, so the request didn't even enter the HTTPS channel. So let's let's go back to our app. Okay, let's try to let me try to log in. Okay, so I'm going to type my username f f f f f f f f, and my password is p p p p p p p p p. Let me put out the console. So this is the last one. I just want to highlight it. And now I'm going to send, I'm going to log in. And it's, oops, sorry. Okay, then do it again. Over here. And now I'm going to log in. So the the app now gives me, hey, that's an authentication service error. But you can see that um, API, the, the OAuth token API is still being um, sent over. And in the MITM proxy, nothing is being captured. Oops, no. So, so okay. So let's right now let's try to uh, turn off the proxy server. Um, so let's go back to proxy settings, and I'm going to turn it off. Okay, let me restart uh, Twitter. <coughs> so now there's no need to look at um, MITM proxy. I just look, look over here. Oops. So the same thing. Now I can see the same request. I try to log in right now. My username is F F F F F. Oops. And password P P P P P. And now I try to log in. Of course, my username and password don't match. But now I see, now I start to see a new AP, uh, a new curl um, curl request. I go over to my Slack channel, and I see it over here. I copy and copy the curl request. Go back to my console, tab four, and now I paste it. Of course, the request, the response is I cannot authenticate you. But this is one way if you if you uh, if you really want to intercept um, HTTP HTTPS request is one way is to create the code and dump it straight into the IPA file. Okay. Now let me get back to my slides. Okay. Okay, so for references, here is the links to the GitHub repo which is featured in this talk. Uh, there's the Network Interceptor repository. Um, you can go in and have a look and play around. Um, also, you might even consider adding your own loggers. You want to send it to Sentry or send it to, I don't know, somewhere, um, some uh, cloud loggers. And here is the and the second one is the dynamic uh, library injection demo uh, where you can actually patch IPA files um, and then you later use it to, to, to install onto your phone. And here is the medium post which I uh, wrote um, two years ago. Um, it's the code injection technique. So you can refer this, this post. So that's the end. Uh, any questions you want to ask? About it? Um, is it? No questions? Oh, yes. So as a developer, is there any way we can prevent this? 
Um, I, I put it to you in a different way. I, 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 as long as you put your logic onto the phone, that's a way to hack. Yeah. So you must always apply security in both the client and server. So I, I, in fact, when I was doing my research for this topic, um, there some someone has actually already created a, a kill switch for SSL on the iPhone um, using some jailbreaking techniques. So of course this this um, can really get you the request not being sent out of the server. Um, hey, sorry, um, this this is one way for you to actually inspect all HTTPS requests. Um, but of course with code injection technique, you are introducing something new into the ecosystem. It might cause the sorry, it might cause the app to crash. So you got to be quite careful with, with it. Yeah, and and do note uh, you can actually do all this um, onto a non jailbroken device. So feel free to go back and try. Um, any other questions? Um, I got a question. Uh, how secure, in your opinion, are all those CDI tools? For example, you use CDI in Pactor, and you needed to type in your password to Upster. I... Is the source code of this application available so we could see if they sent out your credentials anywhere else? I don't think so. Um, so when you want to try all these things out, um, is is not hundred percent safe. Um, how so? So if you actually grab your own the app that you install onto your phone, and you try to patch it, it can't be done because there's um there's the DRM digital rights management um, binary in your app. Um, that is part of um, the security feature security feature of Apple. Um, so I've actually went online to find. I can actually show you the website. Hello? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so there are people who actually crack the app and upload them online. You can, you can find um, WhatsApp, Tinder, etc. all here. Um, but then again, um, these people might be malicious. They might have already injected um, things into the app for, for people. And when people install them, because you can actually install paid apps onto your phone by not paying it. Um, because you know some kids like to like to hack the apps, um, but of course um, some malicious guy might actually add some codes to actually steal your credentials. So if you want to try this, uh, it's all at your own risk. Yeah, everything's at your own risk. So is your phone jailbroken? No, you it's not jailbroken. We sign the application and, and yes, we. Um, so firstly, the IPA file needs to have the DRM removed. So the tank, the there's a complex technique to do that. That requires a jailbroken phone, but the people in the community, um, they jailbreak the apps and actually they upload it online for you to download. Yeah. So once it's with the DRM removed, you can re-sign it in um, your own de developer profile, and now you can install it into your own app. So, uh, so if you sign this with your own developer profile, then you can distribute it online. To other people, or you need enterprise like uh, enterprise certificate for? I've not tried that. <laughs> because like um, you can, someone can create this patch and can distribute it. Uh, theoretically true, but I've not tried. Maybe I can give another talk on that. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that that would be quite interesting. Yeah. Um, if no questions, then I'll pass it back to Masi. Mm -hmm.